Instagram and, and whatnot, ranked in the yeah. top eight. But let's talk about O.J. Howard, who's sure. actually the subject of my bold prediction here. I'm projecting O.J. Howard to finish in the top three. Mm-hmm. And people automatically assume the top three are going to be automatic finishes by Kelsey, Kittle, and Ertz. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that's as guaranteed or as much of a lock as you know people might assume. Because if you look at last year, right, Nick? Like, he finished as a tight end 11, O.J. Howard did. And he did that despite missing five weeks of the season, which is 33% of the entire season, he still finished as a top 12 RB, uh, uh, tight end. Mm-hmm. He only played 10 games. He only had a 7.6% target share. And he also got injured in week four. I mean, they had their bye in week five. He didn't really miss any time, but he still sprained his MCL, and he was back on the field in week six. And this guy was averaging 10, 10 and a half fantasy points a game and a half PPR, which was tied for fifth with Jared Cook, right? Mm-hmm. But if you look at per reception basis this guy's a monster when he's targeted because he's getting three points per reception which was number one amongst all tight ends even amongst even even above travis kelsey there Mm. and you know if you look at the top 12 tight ends here nick i mean he's the only tight end in the top 12 to have less than 50 total targets Mm -hmm. just think about that for a second right for a guy to produce at that level with that limited volume. I mean, the next closest guy there was Vance McDonald with 66 targets. OJ Howard had 48. So a whole 18 targets, yeah, 18 targets more, you know, and tight, and uh, Vance McDonald was still the tight end 12, one spot behind him. So just the metrics that OJ Howard presents and he brings to the table, especially in a Bruce Arians attack where I get it, a lot of people are going to say that Bruce Arians does not utilize his tight ends traditionally. Mm-hmm. But guys, he hasn't had a talent like O.J. Howard, someone that could be split out into the slot very easily and be targeted Mm -hmm. 12 yards, 15 yards down the field, uh, no problem. So so that's kind of my love for O.J. Howard. You know, I really feel like he could break into the top three. I think he's elite in terms of his talent and his fantasy production. Uh, What are your thoughts on that? I'm with you all the way. I absolutely love O.J. Howard. I've reached to get him in round five or so in almost every single draft because of just how tantalizing he is. I don't subscribe at all. It, me and you talk about coaching scheme and whatnot a lot, and there's, I, I'm a bigger believer in it than most. But there are yep. definitely outliers when you look at like what talent did this guy have versus what is he presented with now. I mean, he had to work with what like Rob Houseliar and Jermaine Gresham over his Arizona career. He didn't really have much of a tight end presence. He had like Heath Miller, who's okay for a couple years right. um, over there in, in Pittsburgh, but still, it's Heath Miller. Like they're not six foot six, they're not 250 pounds, and they don't run. Four they're five forties. They're not faster than Mike Evans on their right. own team, which is just <laughs> insane. The size and speed this guy brings to the table. The fact that we've seen it routinely utilized as well over the last couple years. There hasn't been a better vertical seam stretching tight end than than OJ Howard. Uh, these last couple years, you look at it, 16.6 yards per per uh, catch in back-to-back seasons. That's absurd for a wide receiver, never mind a tight end, which is insane. And then Bruce Arians, you look at his offense, it's all about one, mismatches, two, getting vertical. There's not a better vertical mismatch weapon out there right now than O.J. Howard. The only concern for me, of course, is, is health. He's missed significant time these last couple years. But if you were going to guarantee me 16 gains, I think top three is totally reasonable. So I, I'm fully on board with this one. I'm trying yep. to get OJ Howard in every league because the the upside he brings in rounds five or six I think is unmatched, and, and he could be a humongous edge at that position. So I, I'm all about it, and I love seeing people say, "Oh, you know, Bruce Arians hates tight ends. He's only going to go four wide, never use it. He's never had something like OJ Howard." So I, I'd be I can't wait to see how he uses this guy. And we had Trevor Sikamar right. on our podcast, a, a Bucks insider. Um, and, and he was saying the, the one guy he thinks is truly going to explode this year is O.J. Howard, who's already been, again, he's already been exploding. He just hasn't been yep. able to stay fully healthy for those years. He was just, he was gushing about how he's looked in spring and how fast he's out there and how he just like, how deep he's getting on his routes. I, I just can't wait to see what O.J. Howard does this year. I, I'm so pumped. For yeah, him. I'm with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. And, uh, you know, talk about getting vertical uh, and going deep and, and going fast. I mean, this guy, out of 34 of his receptions, 11 of them went for 20 or more yards. So that just kind of mm. speaks to the talent that he does have where he's yeah. really explosive. And I think Arians, even if he does choose to go four wide at most times, utilizes O.J. Howard being split out instead of in line. So uh, totally, totally love this, man. I, I can't believe, uh, you know, a lot 